In this episode, we're setting up damage-based physical reactions when our player collides into something way too hard. Hey guys, today we're setting up physical animation to hit reactions and damage when the player collides too hard with a solid object. Back in episode 39, we created a speed boost ability where the player can run extremely fast and jump extremely far and high. So this episode is all about the negative consequences of that. In this game that we're making, I want fairly realistic physics, meaning if the player hits something too hard, they're going to take damage. And that means we need physics-based animations. And with this episode, we're literally just scratching the surface on what physics-based animations can do, and what physics and Unreal Engine in general can do. And in future episodes of the series, we're going to get into physics a lot more based on our future gameplay abilities. And one thing to keep in mind is that physics animation, at least at the time of this recording, is still experimental, so you might see some weird behavior from time to time, but I'm sure the engine's going to continuously improve this. So here are the key concepts for this episode. Since this is just an intro to physics animation, we're not going to get into anything like rigging a character with physics assets, all that stuff. I'm going to give you the bare minimum, because luckily our UE5 mannequin already comes fully rigged with a physics asset and ready to go. So let's get to it. All right, so we're going to start today by going into our third person character. So mine's under content, my core folder here, because this is the character that we're adding physical animations to. But everything I show you today, if your character has a physics asset, you can make it work with any character. So we're going to start by adding a new component to our character. I'm just going to come up to add and search for physical space animation. And that gets added to the bottom of our character here. And I'm just going to keep the name physical animation. And over here on the details panel for that, we see it uses an experimental class. That's what I mentioned earlier. And there's a couple of quick prereqs that we need to do in order to get this up and running. So the first is that we need to go under the mesh, and our mesh needs to be set up to receive physics collision. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to scroll down in our mesh, and I'm going to expand the collision presets, because as it currently stands, collision enabled is query only. There's no physics collision here. So what we got to do is we got to change this from character mesh over to custom. And the only thing I'm going to change here is from query only, I'm going to do collision enabled for both query and physics. And then the second thing we need to do is we need to tell this physical animation component here to actually use our mesh component as the skeleton mesh. So the way I'm going to do that is on my event graph. I'm going to come up to the top of my event graph all the way at the end of event begin play. So all the way down here. And we have to get our physical animation component. We'll get a reference to that. And we will set the skeletal mesh component. And I'll connect this up. And we got to tell it what our skeletal mesh is. So our mesh is going to be our skeletal mesh. So for the first thing here, let's just get a physical simulation up and running as quickly as possible. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the bottom of my event graph, all the way to the bottom. We're just going to choose any keyboard button. If I search for keyboard, I'm just going to choose like keyboard P for physical animations. And then from P, I'm going to get a reference to our mesh. And from our mesh, we are going to set all bodies below simulate physics. Set all bodies below simulate physics. And the reason I'm choosing this rather than set all bodies simulate physics is we're only going to do this for this initial demonstration above the waist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out a pin from in bone name, and we're going to make literal name because we're going to tell it to only apply this to bones above the waist. And the way we're going to do that is tell it spine 01. Because what this does is it looks at our bone hierarchy. So I'm going to show you that for a moment. So if we go into our animation blueprint, and if we go over to our skeleton from our animation blueprint, so it's looking at all these bones. So from our pelvis, that's everything. It's every single bone. But from our spine, it's only our upper body stuff. So if we say set all bodies below, so this node here, what that means is all bodies that are indented, basically all bodies that are child bones of that original bone. And then I'm going to set this to new simulate, and that's how I'm going to simulate the entire upper body. And then the other thing I'm going to do right next to this, very similar. So we're going to get a reference to our mesh, and we're going to set all bodies below physics blend weight. So this one right here. So connect this up, and then I'm just going to duplicate our make literal name and connect this up here, same thing. And then the physics blend weight, I'm just going to say blend at one. And this is basically the alpha at which our physics animations are blending with whatever other animations are going on with our character. So if we only want a very slight reaction, we could set this to like 0.1. It would only be 10% physics blend then. So 1.0 is going to be completely physics animated. So it's going to be completely ragdoll in this example. So let's compile and save, and we'll test this out with P. You'll see what this does. All right, so I hit P, and there's our character, completely physics simulated. This is called a ragdoll effect, and it's just the upper body, as you'll notice. And if we really want to go crazy, we can get a speed boost, and we could be jumping and flailing around as we're trying. I was playing with this the other day. It was kind of ridiculous. 
But you might be wondering, how is this simulating? Like, how does it know how heavy our hands are, our arms, our head, and how much each bone should be able to bend, like how rubbery it should be? So let me show you where that's all set. We're not going to go into that this episode, but it'll get you started. So if we go back into our animation blueprint and we go over to our skeletal mesh, the second icon here. So we have to go into our asset details on the left. And if we scroll down a little bit, then we'll find our physics asset here, PA mannequin. And this is the physics asset that comes automatically with the Unreal Engine 5 mannequin. In these capsules, they all constitute what's called simple collision around an area of the body. Now, I am far from an expert in this. In fact, I've never actually rigged one of these myself, but there's a great tutorial on Prismatica Dev's channel. I have a link to it in the description below. And I put all the links that I found to be useful in creating this episode in the description below. So feel free to check them out. But now what I want to do is I want to set up these animations for real. And you heard me say on the intro, I want to do this based on collision. So how much does our velocity change from tick to tick? And if it reaches a certain threshold and how quickly it changes, then our player should take damage. And it's the same kind of thing we did with the fall damage three episodes ago, except this episode is going to be entirely based on these physical animations. So for that, we got to go back into our animation blueprint. And I'm just going to close out of my skeleton. I'll close out of this. I'll close out of that. And let's go over to our event graph. And I'm going to scroll up a little bit. We're going to go up, 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 up to all the stuff that's happening right here. And by the way, if you're not following along with this series, you probably don't have nearly as much going on here as I do, but that's totally fine. We're going to walk through this. So three episodes ago, we began setting up vertical impact damage. So if our player falls too hard, too fast, then they take damage based on this vertical impact force. And it's getting that force based on the velocity that our character currently has. And then it's comparing that to the previous velocity that we don't set until all the way at the end of this chain. And then that's how it's passing damage into our character. So before we expand this logic, I'm just going to clean up what we set up three episodes ago because there's just a lot going on here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect our previous velocity here because this is going to be the last thing that we set in the chain completely. And I'm just going to connect up this to here, connect up this to here. So what we're going to do, and if you're not following along with the series, feel free to skip right over this, but we're going to collapse all of this stuff to a function except for our previous velocity and our velocity. So I'm going to right click after highlighting collapse to function. And this one, I'll come over here on the left. I'm going to rename it. It's going to be assess vertical impact force and damage. And actually, I'm going to disconnect that right here. I'm going to put it right next to our assess adjust aim function that we set up in episode 28. And then I'm going to take our previous velocity and I'm going to move this right at the end, connect this up to five because you heard me say this is going to be the very last thing that gets set. And so now following this function, we are going to assess, has our player changed their velocity enough such that they should take general impact damage? So this is vertical impact damage, but now we're just doing generally. And so for this, we're going to do something very similar to this function. So we are going to start by getting our velocity variable under essential movement data, which is something you should have with the default mannequin. But then three episodes ago, we set up our previous velocity variable. So we're going to get that. And again, this will all work for you if you just set this at the end of your chain of events every tick. And then we need to compare these two because we basically need to assess, OK, how much did our velocity change from tick to tick? And that's going to assess our impact damage. So to get that difference, I'm going to drag out a pin here. We're going to do a distance 2D vector. And we see here it says Euclidean distance between two points in the XY plane, and it ignores Z entirely, which is exactly what we want. Because for the Z, that's what this is already doing. So we'll connect this up here. And then we need to set a threshold by which if that's exceeded, then our player will take damage. And I'm going to set the threshold to be 500. And the reason I'm setting it to 500 is 500 is our base walk speed run speed. So if it's greater than that, and by the way, if you don't have a speed boost in your game, you're probably going to need to set this to something lower in order to take damage. So something like three or 400. And you could do that to start just to test this. So from here, I'm just going to branch. We'll connect this up just like this. And so now we need to set our velocity change force. And for that, I'm going to create another new variable. And this is going to be our velocity change force. And this is going to be a float. So I'll select float. And I'm also going to categorize this under essential movement data, the one with spaces. So from the true here, we're going to set this, connect it up. So very similar to what we did three episodes ago, I'm going to drag out a pin, subtract, and we're going to subtract 500 from this. And then we're going to get the square root. And so for example, if we were running at a speed of 1000 and we went to zero because we hit a wall and that's going to be 500 and then the square root of 500, let's do 500, get the square root of that. What is that? 22.3 damage. So if we have 100 health, it's about a quarter of our health. And then I'll connect this up to velocity change force. 
And so now we have to go back to our third person character because we have to create an event that we're going to call when our velocity changes beyond that 500 threshold. And that event is what's actually going to cause the physics simulation to begin. So we'll go back to our third person character. And actually we're going to do the same exact test that we set up for P, we're just gonna do it with a new event. So we're gonna do a custom event and that custom event, I'm gonna call it the velocity change damage. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add an input and the input is going to be our velocity change force. And this is going to be a float. And so basically I wanna make sure that this is always gonna be greater than zero in order to do anything. So we're just gonna set a quick check. It's almost like an is valid check. We're not gonna do anything with this event if the velocity change force is not greater than zero. And then just to get a really quick test up and running again, here's what we're going to do. We're just gonna copy all these. We're gonna paste them down below and connect this up to the true. Now I promise we're not gonna keep it this way, but this is just for a quick test to get this up and running. So compile and save this here. And then we'll go back to our ABP third person character and we'll get a reference to our third person character here, third person character. And then we will call that event. So velocity change damage and connect this up and then connect up our velocity change force directly to that. All right, so let's compile and save. And remember in order to test this, if you're just running at a normal speed, you'll have to set this threshold to something lower, maybe like 200. So what should happen with my speed boost here is when I run straight into the rock face, I should be entirely ragdolled in my upper body. Yep, so there we go. Just sitting on the rock, resting my head softly. Looks like he's having kind of a bad day, huh? That's the experimental side of this. But what we actually want here is we want a sudden reaction to the hit, but then we want our player character to go back to normal over some period of time. Usually if you think of like a boxing match, like you take the hit and it's a sudden jerking motion, but then you're back to normal within like a fraction of a second. So what we're gonna do here is back in our third person character, we're gonna create a brand new function for that. And this function is going to be titled physical animation recovery. And I'm gonna categorize that function under received damage. So what we're going to do with this function is we're gonna call it basically every tick until our character is back to normal. And so we're going to start the function by getting from our animation blueprint, like how much was that impact damage force? And so I'm gonna get a reference to our animation blueprint. So get animbp reference, and I could drag out and get our velocity change force. And the way we're gonna reduce this over time is we're just gonna multiply it by like 0.9. So it's gonna become 90% of whatever it was previously. So we're first going to assess okay, is this less than one? Because if it's less than one, we're basically gonna stop the recursion of this function. And then we'll branch from this, connect this up. And so if I go back to my event graph, we can just get this right here, the set all bodies below simulate physics. So we'll go back to that function, I'm just gonna paste it in here, connect it up just like this and put in a reroute. And what we're gonna do then is set it to no longer simulate. And actually I'm gonna set this to pelvis just so that it's the entire body no matter what. But then if this is not less than one, that's when we're going to have some sort of physical animation reaction, right? So I played with the formula for this a little bit and here's what I did. So we're going to get a reference to our maximum health. And this we set up two episodes ago with our health and damage effects episode. And then from the velocity change force, I'm gonna divide that and it's gonna be divided by our max health. So it's gonna get a proportion of that change force relative to our max health. But what I found is that this effect as it currently stands is a little light. So in order to increase the effect, I'm just gonna add a pin here and we're gonna divide by 0.3. And whenever you divide by a number less than one, it's always gonna increase the number. And just in playing around with the strength of the effect here, I found that setting this to like 0.2 or anything lower, it just kind of like went out of control whenever the player spasmed. But anything less than 0.4 really wasn't that noticeable. So I figure that 0.3 is kind of a good in-between. Because then what we're going to do is from our mesh, so we'll get another reference to our mesh, and we're going to set all bodies below physics blend weight. Connect this up. But instead of this being set to 1, that's what we're going to connect up to here. And then I'm just gonna copy our make literal name again. I'll just copy it from here. It's gonna be spine01. Put in a little reroute node here. And so if you really want this effect to go crazy, set this number to like 0.1 or something really low and you'll get a crazy effect. But now we gotta call this function recursively in order to get that blending out effect I was talking about. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna get a reference to our velocity change force again, paste that over here. And then to make this smaller over time, we're gonna multiply it by 0.9. And then from this, we are going to set our velocity change force. So we're gonna set it and that's stored on our AnimBP. And then we'll connect it up here. I'll put in a reroute. And then the last part of this string, so we've done this before in previous episodes, we're gonna set timer for next tick by function name. And the function name, we're gonna get our same name here. So right click, rename, paste that in just so it's verbatim. And so that's looking good. If you got all that, compile and save. And the last thing is back in our event graph, we actually have to call that function. 
So I'm going to call it right after this, but we're going to do one other thing before we call it. And this is optional, by the way, what I'm about to show you. But I tried this out and actually added some nice variants to the effect. And that is we're going to add an impulse to the entire upper body simultaneously. So a physics impulse that makes the entire upper body go. Mm. So the way we're going to do that is very similar to what we did before. So an Adam BP reference, and we're going to get our two variables that we just got. So our previous velocity and our current velocity, get velocity, and we'll get that difference between them. And actually, realistically, I think this would be reversed, right? Because you want to get the difference between the velocity and our previous velocity. But I just found the effect was better. It actually looked better if I kept it this way. And then I can get a reference to our mesh. And we are going to add an impulse. Add an impulse to all bodies below. And it says, add impulse to all single rigid bodies below. Good for one time instant burst, which is exactly what we want to do on this event. So I'll connect this up. Connect this up here. And our bone name is going to be spine01, because that's what we enabled for physics. And now, after we do this, that's when we're going to call our function. So we have to call it the first time, and then the timer is going to take care of it for the looping. Compile and save, and we are ready to test this out. All right, so the way you test this out is just run around like crazy, spasming into things. And you should get some sort of jerky effect every time you hit something. It should be subtle. So I don't want anything that's really overboard. And it should blend out very quickly. So the last thing that's remaining is we need to apply damage. So let's do that. So for that, we're going to do it directly on our animation blueprint. So we'll go back to our ABP, and immediately after our velocity change damage, this is when we're going to get a reference to our character. So I can search for our character reference, get character, and then from that, apply damage. And we'll connect this up. And the question is, how much damage are we applying? So that's going to be our velocity change force. Connect that up here, put in a rewrap. And like we talked about a few episodes ago, we're not going to do an event instigator or damage causer because the player's just running into stuff for this. But in the future, when they get hit with something from an actual character, then we're going to have that. So let's compile and save and last test. All right, here we go. You know, the nice thing about this is as our player takes damage, he's slowing down based on the effect that we set up three episodes ago. Or I think it was two episodes ago. But the advantage of that is he's not going to be running as fast, so he's not going to take as much damage slamming into things. So hopefully he won't be able to, you know, accidentally kill himself. Now you could play around with this more, right? Like you might be able to set up individual hit reactions to bones based on what part of the body actually hit the object. So feel free to try that out and let me know if you come up with something that's really cool. So for the last part of our episode, as always, we gotta clean stuff up. So in our animation blueprint, we're gonna collapse all of this to a function. So right click, collapse to function, move this over here. And this one, a right click, rename, this function is going to be titled assess general impact force and damage. Compile and save that, and then we'll go over to our third person character. And we just gotta delete out the P here, we're not gonna need that. And I'm just gonna reorganize all my damage stuff. We're gonna move all of our damage stuff together. All the stuff with the pulse timeline that we set up a couple episodes ago, or I think that was last episode, right? So if that's looking good, we got all of our damage events together. Eventually I'll probably comment this with damage, but so far so good. Compile and save. So that concludes our episode for today. Every single episode, I keep saying that we're working towards a gameplay prototype, right? And that means that we need to get into AI. And the logical place to start is we need an AI character. And the logical place to start there is might as well get a metahuman. So that's what we've got. So next episode, it's going to be all about how do we get a metahuman character mapped over to our third person character. Not for us. Not specifically for us, although it is in this example, and he's fully equipped with all of our abilities, with our flamethrower, with our fireball, and of course, our jump boost. But the metahuman's actually going to be for our first AI character, our adversary. And that's going to allow us to begin experimenting with combat and with all sorts of fun gameplay dynamics. So I hope to see you there in the next episode.